Hey, I'm here with Eleni again, again. and um, we just got finished with Posh Fest day two, um, and we thought we would come on and do a full recap of the whole conference. And should we wait a few minutes? Yeah, yeah. well, we got about twenty people. All right. Say hi when you join. Oh, she's got her cute shirt on. I know. I didn't get to wear this today, but I love it. It says, use your power to empower. Right? And it's like spread out real big. It's, you know. Oh, yeah. um, so hi, guys. My name is Rebecca. I am Vex the Boss Lady. This is my BFF in real life, Eleni. Hey, guys. And um, we are back fresh from Posh Fest. Oh, I should get my little notes. Yeah, you should. Where is um, it? I'll grab it. It's in my bag. Um, so thank you for joining us. We are going to do a recap of the full conference and just talk about what we loved, what we didn't love and what we hope we do, what they do next year. And then talk about some of the new features that they announced they were rolling out in the next couple months. So, okay. You say what you liked. What did I like? My notes here. Um, I loved how inspiring everybody was and friendly i think we mentioned that yesterday um the topics were very relevant to what we were what we do every day they had a lot of different posh stories um i want to say maybe 12 posh yeah. stories um on how women started with posh you know how they got there their whys a lot of it was very much inspiring, and I sort of left there today really motivated, which I think is great. What else you got on there? I mean, what don't I have on here? What else did I like? Um, I met a lot of new people, which was wonderful. It was really kind of because of her, because I probably wouldn't have gone up to anybody. They were like, we're like, hey, I'm Eleni, nice to meet you. But um, it was great because they were really looking for her. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm a lady. Yeah, but they were like, didn't I see you on YouTube yesterday? Yes. Um, what was her name? So I don't know. If you were on that I met you today asking about um, if I was on on YouTube because I, she's like, remember, you couldn't see. Yeah, it's, we're a little far away from the screen, so we're trying to we're make blind. that better. But I loved it because I met a ton of um, poshers. And I think it's great. Like nobody was being stuck up. Nobody was being a bitch. Everybody was just so open to meeting all kinds of different people because we're all so different. Um, so that was awesome. There were a few people sleeping. <laughs> there were a couple people sleeping, which hey, they might have parted a little too hard yesterday. We're kind of losers. We're kind of grannies. We're reasonable people. Yeah, boys. we have a problem waking up at eight o'clock in the morning and like going all day long. It's not really what we do. Uh, so we came to bed early. So I kind of understand they may need to take a nap here and there. So. I mean, that's an expensive nap to sleep during a conference. It's an expensive nap. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever yeah. floats your boat. Um, okay, so today the um, the the things that we learned about today were data. You guys know I love data because my husband is the data guru. Um, and the session was with, where'd that go? Um, oh, it doesn't say. Yeah, it was in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Right there. So with, it was Tracy Sun. And Barca. Is that her name? Barca. Yeah. She's the um, VP of data at Poshmark. Yep. And they went um, over a whole bunch of stuff. But some of the interesting things that I think I learned today was if you have closets with items that are listed in multiple posh markets, you're more likely to make a sale. So if you have men's, kids, or and luxury and women's in your closet, you're more likely to make a sale if you have items in multiple markets. So that kind of goes against the theory that I've always been told and understood 
you know, they, you should have a separate men's closet or a separate kids closet. They really are trying to focus on everything in one. So it brings more people to your Poshmark closet, which yeah. I, I didn't. So now that I'm actually thinking about that, I think that's a good thing for us to take a look at what we have in our closets and maybe try and think a little bit outside of the box. I know I need to do that more because when I start um, thinking of what I want to find for the closet, I kind of get stuck on shoes or right. women's accessories. So I kind of understand now a little bit better what she's saying. If we have a variety of items, then that gets all types of buyers you know, right. looking at your stuff instead of just that buyer looking, at, you know, for shoes or women's stuff. You can have somebody looking for kids, luxury items, men's clothes. It, it makes sense. Well, and also if you have, you know, a lot of people end up buying stuff that they don't come to your closet looking for. So they might come looking for your Stella and Dot bracelet, but then right. buy a pair of shoes from you. So if they're coming to look for one thing, they might look maybe even to bundle something and just find something else they like. So it's an avenue to bring more traffic to your Poshmark closet um, by having multiple categories um, in your Poshmark closet. So that was one thing that was very interesting. Yeah. Another thing we learned was, which I have always been told, and I've probably told you guys this, um, is that edit next list, the ENL method, doesn't do anything. All right. Bye, guy. Yeah, goodbye. Rubo. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry guys. And rude ass people in here. Okay, so, all right. All right, so anyway, rude. And what's the matter with thick hip and thighs? Nothing. I just bought some Puma shoes. Yeah, see? Yeah. So that's a perfect example of buying a variety and bundling it all together, which was another thing that we talked about too. Um, she, did you forget what you were saying? Yeah, I was going to say edit next list. So yeah. people have always told me and told uh, you know other people and the it has always been thought of that edit next list is the better way to share and list your items. And the reality is it doesn't matter. That was from the main engineer at Poshmark. Um, that edit, ne edit next list does not matter. Um, engaging in the Posh Markets. I'm not really sure what they meant by that. I want to get more clarification on what they mean by engaging in the markets. I think it meant listing in the different markets. I believe it's a um, But they really are focusing on having conversations with buyers. So if people are commenting or liking or asking questions, I know I'm really guilty of this. And if you sell a lot, getting a, what we consider a relevant question or a redundant question really is annoying and frustrating. And I'm really quick to give a short, snappy answer because it's in the listing. But I, I'm not thinking about it from a perspective of that's an actual opportunity opportunity for me to discuss the issue with the buyer and actually turn it into a sale versus just saying, well, did you read the description? <laughs> Something yeah. like that. So that was another topic that they talked about in another session, which I thought was kind of cool. So they were talking about likes and one of the posh stories, um, the presenter was up there saying that when someone likes something, she takes that opportunity to introduce herself thank them for looking in her closet and if they have any questions to, you know, let her know. And she mentioned that that gives the buyer like kind of a way of going back to that item once they like forgot about it. And they're like, Oh, Hey, and me ask a question or maybe buy the item. So I think I'm going to start doing that because I usually, I usually don't comment at all. And I think that that would help some sales or at least engage in different things on Poshmark to help bring other sellers to your page or buyers. Right. Because you want, I mean, it's all about the algorithm. So if, if they're making these recommendations, this, whatever they're telling us to do, it's just like an eBay open, whatever they're suggesting, they keep talking about, they keep mentioning, those are the things that they want you to be doing. 
And if you're doing those things, that's going to help your closet and bump you up in search results and people get to see your stuff more. So even though some of the stuff seems a little silly, it's important to do because it's important to the platform, which then in return, they reward you if you're doing it by your plots are getting seen more, your items getting seen more. Um, she really said, emphasize that you should use all eight photos. I've always said this on my trainings and my videos and everything. Make sure you're using all of your pictures and if your items aren't selling, they suggest changing the photos, the main photo, switching your photos around, yeah. um, or changing the description or the title. They do not recommend recommend deleting and relisting the item. That's another thing that you hear a lot in the Poshmark reselling world, that you should be deleting and relisting items. And so they said that really isn't a good way to get them sold. Now I've heard from other sellers that that does help them get more sales. And it seems like it sells more quickly. If you delete it and relist it, that could be the case, or it could just be a fluke. Um, I don't know. I think that it's a good idea to look at your listings that you've had on there for a very long time. I kind of started doing this with eBay and editing the title just switching it up a little bit or taking photos again, looking at your photos and saying, you know, does it look clear? Sometimes my lighting is awful because I don't have a fancy light like some of the bigger sellers do. So I just do it right in front of my window on my bedroom floor. And if there's super good light that day, it's great. But if there's not, the picture kind of looks not as good. So you can always edit the photos, which I think is a good thing. Do it on Poshmark too. Um, she also said, make sure you're filling in all the categories. So the sizes, what style it is, what type of item it is, and making sure you're filling in all of those drop down boxes on your listings so that you are able to make sure you're giving the buyer as much information as possible, making sure your listings are really filled with keywords, descriptive words, things that people are going to be searching for. I've said this in a lot of my videos, it just reinforced it so that I did like that knowing that their engineers are working, that, that that's something they want you to do from their engineer standpoint. Um, cause I've kind of gotten a little lazy Yeah, with my listings. Like it seems like the more listings I do at one time, the worse my descriptions are. Cause I'm just trying to get them done and I'm not spending yeah. the time. That was really the same thing in my pictures. Words. Like, oh, it looks fine, but then it doesn't sell. And you're like, okay, let me retake some of these photos because the first ones didn't look very good and yeah. it might help. Um, staying ahead of seasonal trends. So right now, people are going to be shopping for new with tags, items, holiday dresses, New Year's Eve dresses, yeah. um, Christmas things gifts. to wear for Christmas gifts and all that stuff. Yeah. So they um, are really emphasizing that you are forecasting ahead. You know that, okay, Christmas, the holidays, Hanukkah, New Year's, all of that stuff is coming up. If you have those items in your, in your pile or your whatever to look at those on day, you know, red and pink items, heart items for the 4th of July, red, white, and blue stars. You just kind of think of head. Yeah. That was another segment today was the seasonal trends and items that you should be looking for, which I thought was good to know as well. Yeah. But like looking at magazines for upcoming yeah. things like, you know, what's going to be hot for fall will come out in the summer. There are usually a season ahead when it comes to magazines and fashion trends, things like that. So if you are paying attention to the social media accounts of a lot of the fashion brands or even like Nordstrom, Saks Fifth Avenue, you'll get an idea of yeah. what is coming up for the fall and that stuff you can stock. So for instance, if in the summer you find out that thigh high boots are back in, that's something that you might want to look to add into your closet. I know kitten heels were hot for the fall this year, and I do have a few pairs in my closet. Um, so, yeah, they did talk about measurements. They basically said everything that you can put in the description about this item, do it. The size, the material, like whatever, cotton wool, put that on there. Um, measurements are extremely important. I know that it takes forever <laughs> to do the measurements, 
but someone's bound to ask you about it anyway if they're interested and you're going to have to do it. So try and knock it out that first time around. I, I try to clean. They want you to put it dry clean only. Oh, the care hand items. wash. Yeah. Basically everything that you can describe. Um, why does it say no audio? I don't know. That can you guys hear us? us? They must be able to hear us. That person must not be able to hear us. Because they're, they're answering our questions. Why does that say no? We can hear you. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, market launches, you know, they started out with the men's, the kids, the luxury, the women's, the plus size, the market, those market trends are what the data from Poshmark is showing that people are searching for and wanting to buy. One in five new Poshmark users are men and men's items are really picking up and selling faster on Poshmark. I have noticed that since I put the men's items in my regular closet, they don't seem to be selling as much as when I had them in my boss man resale closet. So I don't know about that yet, but I haven't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Right sorry. Um, so I'm not really sure what is going on with, with the men's market, whether it's better to have a different closet they really made it seem like it was better to have it all in one closet. Um, Poshmark does not offer returns unless the item is was not, not as described. described. So know that when you purchase something from Poshmark, make sure you look at every single picture before you buy it, read the descriptions and ask questions because there are no returns. They did not even talk about returns. And they did not say if they were branching into hard goods. I don't think that that's something they that they're either. focusing on right now. Um, they did say that styling your photos, so either wearing them or putting them on a mannequin with a purse or a pair of shoes, some, somehow showing what the person could, how they could wear it, what they could wear it with, that that is a really great promotional tool and it does help bump your sales. So if you can take a picture of someone or yourself wearing the purse and they can get an idea of how big it is or you know the way that it fits on where your shoulder, they're more likely to purchase that than if you just have the purse sitting on the table. So I mean that's I think a part of a personal preference. I know, you know, it is nice to be able to see it, but I realize that not everybody has a model or a mannequin. Like none of my clothes I that I sold don't fit me. So yeah, they're gonna look terrible on me. I would be like <laughs> The fat guy in a little coat. Yeah, you know, that, like, that would not be very flattering for anything to sell. Also, fit, right? I wear sweatpants and tank tops almost every single day. You probably don't want me to style you. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. Um, there was an interesting website they mentioned called estatesales.net. That was one of the um, recommended websites to potentially go and find, which I have never heard of that. So estatesales.net would be good. Um, and what bothered me about the data session um, was that they talk about how they are a data-driven company. They talk about how they love data, they use data, they have a VP of data. <laughs> And then they literally give us the most basic sales report you can get um, yeah. and not nothing else. So you really have no idea about their algorithm. You really have no idea about, um, you know, what's actually selling on the app besides these parties, and different things. I really think that since they are so data focused, they should be able to provide uh, more guidance to the sellers on you know, our traffic, how many people are going to our listings, how many people are liking and unliking our listings, um, you know, how many people, I, like I don't know. I, know. I just, I, I really feel like. sales report is really new. They just well, yeah, but I mean, they're five years old and they're just coming out with a sales report. And why aren't people paying sales tax and why aren't people paying um, income tax? I mean, that's a hot issue. So someone's asking how many items should be listed cons constantly to gain a good about traffic. I, my, my belief is five to 10 items a day keeps your closet fresh. 
And um, not me. I think everybody's different. If you, if that is what you do full time, then yes, I think that that's good. But for me, I'm not listing five to ten items you a list, day. You have like five million things in your house. I get out of here. No, yeah. I list a couple things a week. I think five to ten a week for me is good if I can do that. I think that that will keep things fresh. But if you're doing it every day, if you're full time, then you might want to do it daily, depending on what you find. They didn't tell us any of that stuff though either. No. Yeah. They didn't say anything about that. They did not. Um, so that's just our opinion. <laughs> let's see. They had 10,000 submissions for their hackathon, um, which was a submission that they got from ideas from sellers and buyers on how they could improve the app. Uh, one of the biggest and most commonly request items was to redo the feed, the news, your news line, where it tells you the comments, who liked your items, style requests, all of those things. It's a really great feature. They're now gonna have it divided out, so you can select the category that you wanna see. If you wanna great. see, yeah, if you wanna see all your likes, if you want to see all your comments, if you want to see all your offers, they're all going to have separate tabs. That's one of the new features they will be rolling out in the next couple months. And the second one, which actually is my favorite, and I am very excited about it, is the ability to do, I don't know, there have been plenty of times where I started to do a listing. I had all the pictures in there. I went and I did, I'm like, oh, I forgot to check, I forgot to measure it, or I didn't take a picture of the size. And I then you have to delete the whole listing. You can't save it anywhere, you can't save it as a draft. So you have to delete all of your work that you already put into that listing, and then freaking go back and have to redo everything once you've got the size. So now we can do draft, well, not now, but when they Soon. release it, I, my guess is by the end of the year it will be released, it's in the next couple months. So there will be a new draft feature coming to Poshmark, which is very, very exciting. Um, and it also will help if you have someone helping you, like a virtual assistant, they will be able to go in and do drafts for you. Um, they'll still have to log in under your account, but they'll be able to go in and do drafts that you can just go in and approve. You won't have to worry about them making mistakes or you know, if you want to have your kid or an intern or anybody else helping you with your business. It gives you the opportunity to review those listings before they go live on Poshmark. So those are the two new features they talked about. Um, are you excited about this feature? I am. I think that that's a good, like for me, when I list everything, I usually sit down and do it all at the same time. And this will give you the opportunity to spread them out within a few days, which I think will help bring in more traffic, you know, to your closet. Same thing with eBay. So listing it a few times, a few items a day, through the drafting, I think is great. Um, there's no ability to put cost of goods in the sales report. You have to do all of that yourself. And even their demo yesterday had like demos on how you had to do everything yourself. Um, I do have an entire course on data. So if you're interested in that, I'll have all the links to that in the description. But um, yeah, what else? Oh, and then we missed a session. So I'm not really into boutique stuff. I don't really want to sell wholesale stuff. So we ran to Target. <laughs> what did we buy at Target? Oh, what did you buy? Who? Do we have a lot of dog lovers that are watching? Dog friends. So my dog Mocha, she's 18 months. And I usually never dress up my last dog for anything. But she is a like chocolatey goodness pity mix. I love her. She's on my uh, closet page, if you can go on there and see her. I got her this cute outfit. We definitely came back from Target with a dog. And she gets this cute little headband. <laughs> Sorry, I had to show you guys. I'm huge into dogs and I'm huge into rescue. It's one of my passions after or before reselling. I don't know, maybe before. <laughs> yeah. So I had to show you guys. Oh gosh. <laughs> It's been a yeah. long weekend. You can have a mean pity and a Wonder Woman outfit. It'll be great. So what was your favorite part of the conference? Meeting everybody. Yeah. 
For meeting sure. all the new postures and yeah. just um, gathering different ideas on what they do day to day because we're all different. So I really, I enjoyed that a lot. I, I honestly was amazed at how many people have watched my videos. I'm not saying that because I'm like, oh my God, so many people watch my videos. Seriously, I almost was in tears meeting some of you. She all was. Of you. I mean, witness. it was a really an emotional weekend for me because I have so many people that actually watch these videos and I am just amazed by it. But to actually meet people in person and they say that I've helped them or changed them live, their lives, it just is so impactful and so meaningful to me. Um, my heart is definitely like, I'm going to cry right now, but like my heart is full this weekend. Seriously. I mean, you guys, isn't Rebecca great? She gives you guys tips on, I mean, you don't even have to know anything about Poshmark or eBay and you can go on here and listen to her advice. Yeah, but like those people help. that were like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm disabled and I don't feel like yeah. I'm contributing to my house or like, yeah. you know, just. It's really great. So I don't know. I just thank all of you from the bottom of my heart because, um, you know, I only do this because I know that I can help all of you. So, um, you know, I don't do it to get famous. I mean, I'm yeah. not. It was really great having everybody come up her and, and thank her and want to take pictures. I was the um, picture taker. <laughs> everybody would come up and go, Hey, you're that girl from Rebecca's Instagram. Will you take our picture? All good. It's all good. It's all good. And I'm like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm a lemmy. Nice to meet you. It's all good. So the marketplace, we were a little confused on that too, but I think it's just the different segments. Um, men's, women's, luxury, kids. What else is on there? If you look on the, if you get on Poshmark and go to the bottom, all the marketplaces are on there. So if you're listing a woman's top, it's going to go in women's. If you're listing men's shoes, it's going to go in men's. If you're lo like if you're listing, I don't know, a Burberry scarf, it's going to go in luxury. So don't make me cry. Yeah, don't make Rebecca cry. I, I really don't. I'm not very good at um, people crying in front of me. So let's not do that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, migraines are awful. She gets them way more than me, but it's not fun at all. Um, what other questions do you guys have for us? Oh, thank you, Poshmark. They had an amazing yeah. makeup bar, braid bar, and what was the other one? What was it called? Be Birdie or something? Call me Birdie? Something Birdie. Does it have it on there? They had all of these stylists there. We could go in between the sessions. They braided my hair. Can they see my hair? Yeah. They braided in my hair, they curled hers, they put on makeup on you if you wanted. Um, it was fantastic. So these people can come to your house and do this stuff for you if you don't have the time to leave. Something the food was terrible. Again. Oh, yeah. We don't want to talk about the food. I really no. hate to be negative. No. That was... They have the same food as they had yesterday. No. Who does that? The food was no way. Who no. does that? I mean, I like to eat and... Yesterday I wasn't crazy about it, and then when we went in there today and saw that they have the same thing, they, they added a potato salad to the mix. Same sandwiches, same meat, same everything. I think all of the women were like, oh. Because what if you're a vegetarian? The other lady was gluten-free. She's like, I couldn't eat any of it. Right. What are you supposed to yeah. do? You don't even have a salad up there. Uh, book a birdie. Book a birdie. Book a birdie. Thank That's you. The, who did the... If, I think it's right now a Dallas-based <laughs> company. Yeah. Um, but they really, they had lots of gals there doing hair and stuff. And, um, you know, it was kind of cool to see all the, um, the, um, boutiques too, to like get to, they, did. Did. they had different vendors, um, in, in front of the beauty bar thing. So there were probably how many were there? Maybe 10 or 12. I think there were like and six they, like them. some people had jewelry. This was wholesale. So if you wanted to purchase wholesale and then and incorporate that into your store. They allowed you to go and check it out and purchase. I think if you wanted, they had jewelry, shoes, handbags, like different tops, different pants. So that was really cool. I enjoyed walking around and seeing all the different items that they had. Okay. And then one of the um, postures that was a speaker, I was very impressed with this young man and he is on, he has very nice stuff and he loves like styling. He was cool. I like yeah. that. He was wearing a man bun, but I, I think he bun. pulled it off pretty well. He's super young too. Yeah. 
Um, let me find his session here. So his name is Nicholas Waskowski, and it's at Nico, N-I-C-H-O underscore Wasco, W-A-S-K-O on Poshmark. Um, and he really had some great insights on his panel about how he uses the styling tool and has a lot of repeat customers. He said someone has purchased from him 15 times and he talks to her about what she's looking for. He actually sources almost for her and knows what her style is and he knows she'll come back and buy. Um, so it was very interesting to see, you know, a, a younger generation, mm -hmm. a man, mm -hmm. um, and, a, um, somebody a little entrepreneur, not a little, I shouldn't have said that, but a young entrepreneur that was, I mean, he has a blossoming Poshmark business and he really has some great insight yeah. on, um, it's on my, stickers. it's also on my Instagram story. So if you go to boss lady resale on Instagram, um, you can see that some of the tips that I put from him, I did some quotes and tagged him in it. So, um, let's What's see. Anthony and John's talk. Um, no, we did not see Anthony and John's talk. I believe it was early this morning and, um, we went to the, you guys this morning, it was pouring oh my cats and dogs outside. Oh my God. We have to I don't know if you guys. follow her on Instagram, <laughs> but we tried to go to Starbucks to get coffee and something small to eat before we headed over there. And we literally got into the Uber and went there, but it was like a, it was kind of raining, but not, not. hundreds foot. Walk. I don't know. It was pouring, so we literally had to run in there, and then it just got worse. And we asked for some bags. I saw your fancy raincoats. We asked for bags because we did our hair and stuff. And we didn't want to go in there looking like some wet cats. So they gave us trash bags. So we put a hole in the trash bag and put it on top of us, and then stuck the other bag, the Starbucks bag, on top of our heads. We looked ridiculous walking into Poshmark, but at least our hair. <laughs> We were literally bag ladies. We had garbage bags on our head. We were wearing them like ponchos. Uh, if you want to see that, it's on my Insta story as well. It's very popular. But we had a great start to our morning. Those raincoats will be available in my poncho <laughs> next week. Yeah. But now it's sunny and it's all good. There is a um, party tonight that we're going to go to for a little bit. Um, because we have to wake up early because we're taking a little girl's trip to the Bahamas. So we may do a live from there. Um, yeah, because we're gonna do. We're gonna. I'm gonna pick your brain about sales. Oh, that's right. So Eleni in her real life, <laughs> like it's like Superman. She has like her posh costume, and then in her real life, is the like the number one saleswoman in her company. She does. I yeah, mean, like for real. Like I'm not. Even, you know how some people are like, I'm the number one. This she actually is. So. Yeah, I like to dabble in quite a few things. If I'm passionate about something, um, it just keeps me going. So we'll talk about sales on our next um She our next seriously video. did a sales call for the nonprofit she works for, the Rescue. <laughs> and I was in the bathroom putting my makeup on, and I was like, is that her talking? I mean, I, she sounded so professional, and she knew exactly what to say. She didn't stutter. She wasn't like, um... I'm calling from here and I, can you do that? I mean, she, it was like, can I do this? And how do you do this? And I mean, it was great. So I'm really like, excited, you guys. I usually don't actually take initiative and put an, a function together, but I'm um, doing a fundraiser for my rescue in Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm so excited because I called up a dog bakery slash clothing company and I really wanted to get them into the fundraiser because I'm how cool is it you're doing a dog fundraiser why not have dog treats to buy and clothes or whatever else to help with the fundraiser and they say yes so I'm so excited I'm very I excited mean about that this. was good Is anybody from Cleveland Ohio by the way we have any it was one of those calls where you know you're gonna hang up on them and then they just keep asking you questions and you're like yeah and then they actually get you to tell you what you want to hear but then you get off the phone and you're like why did I just tell her that this was going to hang up. And I didn't hear from them for like a day. I'm like, oh, they might be too busy for it, you know, because some of these companies don't have time to do a two-hour fundraiser event. But they are. That's pretty so, yeah. So we're going to do a we're gonna do a video on that from the Bahamas. Are we going to Posh Fest next year? Yeah. Yeah, we are. It's I nice. really enjoyed 
It's a lot. We got to get Julie Kashishi. Yeah, Julie will be Julie. making her come next year Coming for next sure. Year with us. And anybody else who wants to join us, it was a lot of fun. I will say, I will say one thing about Posh Fest. Um, last year, I felt the Posh Fest was a lot more clicky. I felt like it was more people were in their groups and they only stayed with their friends, and it felt a lot more. Um, exclusive instead of inclusive when it came to the groups this year i felt that even the groups of people like the girls that were together were very inclusive of everybody else who was at the conference so i didn't feel like last year where people were kind of segregated to their different like friend groups or tables or you know like at high school where you're, you sit at the round table with all your friends this year i felt like it was much more um open and engaging and people were all talking to each other there weren't like i don't think well i'm hoping no one felt like they couldn't come in but talk to me it didn't seem like anyone felt like they couldn't yeah. come and talk to me i would definitely recommend it if you are interested and you want to get motivated and meet fellow postures and gather ideas i think it's great i think it was definitely worth the money which i'm not saying about ebay because i'm no, not doing ebay open. we will never go back again. to ebay open not it, again. Was, it was like a turd on a stick but it, the food, was, but the food, but the food, was, the food was better anyway. But that's okay. We're not here for the food. We'll go out to dinner if we need to. Listen, they put so, all those sessions on the internet afterwards. So why am I paying three hundred dollars for a conference when you're going to put all the sessions on the internet? Like that just made me mad. <laughs> why do you think that was? <laughs> Turn on a stick. Turn on a stick. It's, yeah. I'm just mad. I'm salty right now at eBay. So I just don't like their new changes. One thing that I do want to mention about eBay that I got an email from um, PayPal. If you do PayPal business loans or the um, extended line of credit that PayPal has, part of the agreement that you have with PayPal is that you will honor their payment system. So you, if you have an open, um, if you have an open business loan or open line of credit with PayPal, you cannot opt into the new eBay system until that is paid off because it's part of that agreement. So just so you know that, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if this is relevant to anyone, but you know, if you have one of those and you're looking to switch to eBay's new payment processing system, just be aware that that could be a conflict for you um, if you have one of those. I just thought of that now. I don't know why I mentioned it, but. Posh Fest tickets, how much were they? Uh, $199. $199, and I believe eBay early, Fee was two fifty, and then after a certain date, it went up to three hundred. I think wasn't it like almost four at the end? That I'm not sure. I know that we paid two fifty, but we booked it super early. Well, but the good thing about eBay Open was that it was in Las Vegas, and we get comped rooms a lot because we go a lot. And the other thing is, there's super cheap rooms in Vegas because there's a thousand hotels. Here, the hotels were very expensive. Um, we ended up getting we're in an Airbnb. And there's actually a lot of other women that are staying in this. We've met people like in the elevator. Um, and so there are other women. We love in the Vegas. So, um, Rosie's Closet. We go to Vegas like two to three times a year. And we're grannies in Vegas too. We go to bed. Don't get us wrong. We're still in bed early. <laughs> but we go to the pool and we go to dinners and we walk around and see all the things to see. It's a bunch to see in Vegas. Again, we love it. We're sensible human beings. We're not up until four in the morning in Vegas. And if I am, it's because I have insomnia, which was not true last time we went. So but we love Vegas. Bad. We're actually hoping that Posh Fest will be in Vegas next year. We really are. Yeah. We were talking about that earlier. That would be awesome. Especially in September. It's not too or hot. It'll be perfect. DC. Or DC. I want to go Vegas. Well, I want to go somewhere warm. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. What else? Anything else? I think that's pretty much it for now. Any last minute questions before we go? So I would, overall, Posh Fest was a really great experience. Yep. I loved meeting everyone. I'm excited to go to the party tonight, which I don't think I've ever said I'm excited to go to a party in like 10 years. So... <laughs> Uh, that's a yeah. good time. And then we go to the Bahamas tomorrow. So if you have any tips for the Bahamas, oh yeah, let us know. We're and going we're to Atlantis. Atlantis. 
So if you have any tips. We've never been. We're not planning on leaving the resort. If you've gone to swim with the pigs, but is it worth it? I want to know We're that. thinking about swimming with the pigs. Oh. Don't touch the lionfish. Those lion, yeah, the lionfish like are poisonous. Ones, right? Puffers are not poisonous. Lionfish are. Yeah, but they're like, they look like they're puffy, right? They're the ones with all the yeah. things. Yeah. We will not. Give a hello to Brazil. Hey, Brazil. Florida's always warm. Mm -hmm. Are you okay, though, with the hurricane? Uh, this is, this is, if you missed, if you just hopped on, you can go back and um, when I'm done, you'll be able to rewatch the whole thing. Um, lastly, I will say my Poshmark course is done. I've had really great feedback on it. Um, the link for the course will be in the description of this video. I had people who have taken the data course come up to me uh, at Poshfest and really say how much it has helped them in their business. I cannot emphasize enough how much knowing your numbers and knowing your business really impacts your profitability awesome, and awesome. how you like pick stuff and, awesome. and get stuff. So um, just, you know, make sure that you guys. Um, We're going to go live again in a couple days. Yeah. Tomorrow, maybe not, depending on how tired we are in the hotel, but we are going to, we'll, we definitely will go I live. I mean, if you guys want us to go live, we'll go live. It's yeah. not very often that we're actually together. I know. So it's like, it's fun for us. Maybe we'll you guys have, like listening to us or not, we're we'll having have, fun. We'll have some wine in our room and oh, then yeah. it'll be a very exciting live. What do you call that? What do you call your rosé oh, with Rebecca? Rosé with Rebecca. We should do that tomorrow night because we're going to be tired. Okay. Awesome. All right. We'll see we you guys maybe Thank you tomorrow. For watching. We'll see you guys maybe tomorrow night. All right. Bye. Bye.